Hello, everyone. Career turnarounds are a hard thing to pull off. For example, I'm willing to bet that a lot of you haven't thought about Katy Perry in a while, which is usually a death knell to a music career. But of course, then Katy went and dropped her newest single, Woman's World. The track is already being hailed as awful, terrible, and one of the worst things I've ever heard. And the music video isn't much better. Did you ever wonder what would happen if 2015-era BuzzFeed pop feminism was allowed to grow and fester, unabated by time and the shifting sands of online discourse, until it eventually broke containment and leaked out onto the internet? I suspect that it would look a lot like this. But hey, I don't know if we need to go after Katie any more than people already have. It's been a rough road for Katie's comeback, and I'm certainly not going to stand in the way of progress. Katy Perry will receive the Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award at the 2024 MTV Video Music Awards. I'm sorry. The Video Vanguard Award. They're giving her the Video Vanguard Award. That tears it. We're doing the episode. Roll the credits. Woman's World is the latest single by Katy Perry, who wrote the song as a female empowerment ballad after noticing that two of her biggest singles, Firework and Roar, both uplifted women. So naturally, to co-write and produce this ode to strong women, Katy Perry brought on feminism's truest champion, Dr. Luke. Perry hadn't released a song in nearly three years, after 2021's When I'm Gone, which peaked at number 90 on the Hot 100. So now it was time for her to regain her pop throne by any means necessary. Let's see how she does. Dang, biting social satire. We open on a recreation of the famous steelworkers eating lunch on a beam photo, but they're all women! This really would have packed a punch in June of 2016. Doing Rosie the Riveter cosplay is really something that should have ended with Clinton's campaign. But I'm trying to figure out how we get them to have Pokemon go to the polls. This is the day that Herstory died. We follow Katie and friends through several scenarios, including shirtless construction work. Why does this sound familiar? Gross. I mean, none of them even wash their hands. So now we're just parodying influencers? What's the point here? Who are you trying to go after? That reminds me, if someone is going after you and your precious internet data, NetSearch VPN can help. Use the code in my bio for 27% off and a free... So Katie does a hard reset and just ends up doing the exact same stuff in the second half of the video. There's no point in killing her off and bringing her back. Why would her anvil death lead to chaos in the streets? Prior to this point in time, somewhere in the past, the timeline skewed into this tangent, creating an alternate 1985. But then her car legs run out of gas and she has to fuel up in the most inappropriate way possible. God, butt fuel prices have skyrocketed. Thanks, Joe Biden. Luckily, Trisha Paytas is here to save the day in her monster truck. You get it, because you shouldn't do your makeup in a monster truck. I don't really know what any of this has to do with feminism. You see, already the molecular structure of the planet is changing. Katie makes fun of TikTok dancers here, but you 100% know she would love this song to blow up on TikTok. This ring light would put way too much light on the bottom of your face. Who would ever want to... Oh, okay, I, I see it now. It's the female symbol. Okay. This whole video feels like it was made with AI. 
Not that the shots were made with AI, well, not all of them, but it's like they put write me a Katy Perry video into chat GPT and just filmed whatever they got. Uh, they do construction work in a bikini. Sure. She does her makeup in a monster truck and Trisha Paytas is there. Okay. She flies off in a helicopter and does a TikTok dance. I guess. Hi, it's me, Chris Frank. Chris Frank? More like Chris Red, you know, because of the smell. But this is me. The song went nowhere. Like, predictions showed it only charting in the bottom quarter of the Hot 100, but it managed to claw its way up to number 63. Thank God, that would have been embarrassing. Katie posted a video explaining how the music video is actually satire. I'm sorry, Katie. Satire of what? And we're kind of just having fun, being a bit sarcastic with it. It's very slapstick um, and very on the nose. And with this set, um, it's like, oh, uh, we're like, we're not about the male gaze, but we really are about the male gaze. You can't just claim satire and make all of your problems go away. For something to be satire, it needs to A, be clear it's satire, and B, actually be trying to make a point. What is this trying to say? That we're still expecting women to dress provocatively, even after all this time and feminist discourses? Because that feels like a major stretch. But the problem is, what else could it be? Wait, 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 hold on a second. Pull that video back up. And we're kind of just having fun, being a bit sarcastic with it. It's very slapstick. This video was recorded on set. They knew. They knew their satire was meaningless from the start. And they still went online and acted like we're the dummies for not getting it. Oh, Katie, this goes all the way to the top. You can't fool me. It all makes sense if you look at it. This song and video are hopefully the last dregs of a genre that I've tentatively called Trump art. It's all the music, movies, books, and shows that are created either about Trump specifically or the cloud of horrible ideas that surround him. Some of it worked, some of it didn't, but hardly any of it was meant to last. Publishing companies made a meal out of tell-all memoirs from White House aides, but most of them have ended up in the bargain bins and discount outlets, desperate to sell off any remainders that they still can. I think that's why so much of this video feels dated. It's protesting something we're not protesting anymore, and making points that we've all moved on from. I think a big part of the problem is Katy Perry desperately wants to be seen as a political artist, but she's incredibly bad at it. All of the empowering lyrics feel like they're pulled from t-shirts you'd see at those early anti-Trump marches, and none of them feel weightier than a cutesy postcard. She's had this problem for a while. 2017's Witness, born of Perry's anger and frustration at Trump's election, twisted and morphed until it was hardly recognizable as a protest album. The lead single, Chained to the Rhythm, comments on so much that it's mind-boggling, and Bon Appetit, which she describes as representing a sexual liberation, feels like a regular food-slash-sex pun song masquerading as something deep and meaningful. The album was supposed to start her purposeful pop era, but just showed that she really struggles to create a straightforward political message. And could you imagine if Kamala Harris had actually chosen this song as her campaign anthem? It would have tanked her chances before she even started. It would probably be one of the worst pop star endorsements since this post by Madonna. I'm very surprised that this is still up. There was a conspiracy theory that this song was written to open the Barbie movie, but it wasn't done in time and it had to be cut. I don't know if I believe that. Tom, can we pull up the clip?
Dang it, it works. It shouldn't, but it works. Curse you, Greta Gerwig. You should have waited. I guess you just hate powerful women. She's the 2024 Video Vanguard Award winner and a forever pop icon. It is Katy Perry. All right, let's dig into this Video Vanguard business. Yes, while I was diligently editing this episode, MTV announced that in their infinite wisdom, they were giving their Video Vanguard Award to one Miss Katy Perry. Thank you so much to MTV for believing in my weirdness from day one and for helping artists extend their worlds beyond a song. For those of you not permanently plugged into the Video Music Award landscape like I unfortunately am, the Video Vanguard is essentially the VMA's Lifetime Achievement Award. It began with the first VMA ceremony in 1984 and was lauded as a way to honor innovators in the music video space. Over the years, it's been awarded to such musicians and directors as The Beatles, Russell Mulcahy, Peter Gabriel, David Byrne, Madonna, Michael Jackson, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Bon Jovi and Wayne Isham, and Duran Duran. All right, so maybe they didn't all lay down aces, but you still got the sense that even when they failed, they were still moving the medium forward. But now it just doesn't have that same feeling. I don't deserve this award, but I'm not going to give it back. Maybe it's because the music video medium is pretty set in its ways now, in a way that it wasn't in 1984. The honorees just don't feel like they're really pushing the envelope like they once did. A friend the other night asked me, what is the Video Vanguard Award? And what does it mean? And I said, I don't really know. I think the word vanguard means in the front. We've made a whole lot of videos that don't, you know, don't suck. <laughs> MTV retired the award for most of the 2000s, only bringing it back for Duran Duran in 2003 and Hype Williams in 2006. By the time it was reinstated in 2011 as the Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award, something had shifted. First off, they stopped giving out multiple per year and cut off non-artists entirely. Gone are the days of honoring directors who have a large say in how the videos are presented and should have some equal consideration. This is not an award so much for us as it is for uh, this man. This is for Wayne Isham who's directed all our videos for the last five, six years. But they've also made some choices for honorees that I'm not quite sure about. In retrospect, should we really have given Kanye another chance at the VMA stage, given his history? I still don't understand award shows. So given all this, I guess I'm not surprised that Katy Perry is getting the award. It's been more of an accolade to honor popular artists who also make videos for a while now. And criticizing MTV for its choices is so trite and overdone that it's basically on the online music critic licensing exam. But it still feels like a weird juxtaposition to make. Like, imagine going back to 2009 and telling people that Katy Perry would eventually win the two highest honors in music videos. They wouldn't believe you. I barely believe it myself. And last but not least... My husband. I watched Russell Brand on television the other night. What the hell was Katy Perry thinking when she married this guy? What a loser he is. Oh, and yes, Katy, they do build statues of critics, so you're just wrong. Thanks for watching, everyone. I always appreciate people liking and sharing my videos. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. If you find any terrible music videos that you're desperate for me to cover, drop them in the comments. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. I could not imagine breaking international environmental law just to film a music video. But hey, that's just me. I guess I'm built different. I can't believe I gave up my whole brat summer for this.